Hello, happy Thursday. Welcome to Campcast. Um, spring is in the air. It's looking a little, a little warmer and a little greener outside. Well, it is in the UK at least. I don't know about Russia, if uh, the snow, the snow is melting or uh, or still very much frozen. Who knows? Well, all I can tell you is that spring is in the air in the UK, and it's uh, pretty exciting. A bit like my guest today, um, Stephen Kay, who uh, is a former colleague of mine when I used to work back in, in Tuming. Uh, Stephen is based um, in Tumen still um, and has his own language centre called uh, Open to English. Uh, so I'll put a link to his uh, his site in the description for anyone who wants to check him out. In today's show, uh, Stephen and I talk about uh, all sorts of stuff. We talk about different approaches to teaching and learning. We talk about um, top-down versus bottom-up information processing. Uh, we talk a little bit about Welsh, unfortunately, but we also um, discuss um, media bias um, and uh, all of that sort of stuff. So um, without further ado, uh, I hope you enjoy the show. Right, three, two, one, and uh, Stevenage. Hello, so Michael. How are we doing? Everything okay? Yeah, it's cracking. I'm yeah, really enjoying life. Yeah, very good. Very good. Glad to hear it. Even though uh, you're in the midst of, a, well, I say you're in the midst of a of a pandemic. I mean, it's we we are in lockdown two or three now in the UK. I can't, I've lost count of them. Is it how lockdown is it in reality in Tumen? It isn't. It isn't. It isn't. No, and Leon is visiting from Moscow when it's not there either, really. Um, mm. It's a total contrast to... Um, I have students in Leicester, a group of students in Leicester for some bizarre reason, and um, they're just confined to the houses. They're going crazy. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And, like, I, I would understand... So every week Boris comes out with some sort of, you know... <laughs> well, there's the usual nonsense that he comes out with, and then there's some sort of justification for this lockdown. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone who supports the lockdown in the UK and people are starting to get annoyed with it now. Um, yeah, I am. Um... But the thing is that we, we have one of the worst death rates in the world. Mm -hmm. like, oh. Yes, we, we are more honest about, like we, we are more, um, we report deaths more readily than some other countries. That's true. But still we have one of the highest rates, certainly in Europe mm -hmm. and also the world. Um, so it's like what's the what's the point of the lockdown precisely like boris is saying yes we have destroyed the economy but at least it's not working so you know that's great it's a um it's a bit yeah i mean your, your, your view of the uk from russia is different from your view of one's you view of the uk in the uk and it, the vibe i get is well yeah but that's if you, you're doing it a bit why are you doing this now and why you know you're not doing mm -hmm. not making much of an effort it's like um yeah but we just look we look good <laughs> yeah oh, by, well by the way our vaccine program is fantastic <laughs> yeah well that that is true to be fair we are we are we are vaccinating um very quickly but you know mm -hmm. still a lot of people have died so it's kind of maybe too little too late i don't know yeah um, but also when you look at the percentage of people or, or, or i mean this is just a bit of a, a, a philosophical um observation about the death the number of deaths as a percentage Mm -hmm. if you leave, if you left the pandemic to do it's a natural run its lateral course it's sort of a long way to go oh yes well that's not uh, anyway i don't want to dwell too much on the on corona. Yeah, i'm sure yeah. people are sick of hearing about it but uh yeah yeah, but yeah. i must admit i don't i don't envy your lockdown i'm I well spend... let, let me tell you a secret then Stephen. i'm um the rules they they don't apply to me i i, I i've lived too long in russia mm. i don't care about the rules um yeah. The only rules worth following are sensible rules. These are not sensible rules. Mm -hmm. I don't respect them. I don't follow them. Um, I do what I want. <laughs> I'm too too much of a Russian soul in me, I think, to respect these rules. There's, there's an element of illogic to some of this stuff. You know, when you're outside, um, you know, make, my sister, um, um, I posted a photograph of me and Natasha and I out. This is before winter, and we were out in um, Zatomensky. And her only comment was, where are your masks? And my reply was, there's nobody within 50 meters of us. Also, we're outside. Yeah, yeah. So just, you know, there's a certain lack of logic to some things. Mm. 
But yeah, you're quite right. I'm sick and tired of talking about pandemics. So let's talk about something more interesting. Uh, I've made us. I think you've reverted back to Englishnessness. Yes, absolutely. This is an English podcast, so we're going to do things properly here for Queen and Country. Okay. Uh, I've um, made a I've just, thrown, I've just thrown my disposable, disposable coffee cup in the bin. <laughs> well, I've got uh, Darjeeling today. Um, okay. Darjeeling, for anyone who doesn't know, listening is a uh, is a Himalayan. It uh, is. What would you call it? Species of tea. It's a little bit stronger than English breakfast, but a uh, variety of that. We soldier on. Um, and I'm also, hang on, give me one second. I'm just going to put some milk in my tea. I'm not going to drink black tea like some sort of communist. Right. Yeah, I've got native. Natty's all there. <laughs> a good Tesco fellow there. Um, I've, got, I've got native. Uh, my coffee's black. My tea's black. Oh, you've gone for the black tea as well. Yeah, I, I, I did. I do. I do enjoy black tea sometimes. Um, if I'm in, if I'm in like a particularly Russian mood, like if I've had like a really Russian dinner or something or like, you know, borscht or some nice black bread or something like that, then I'll have like tea with lemon, like black tea. That's nice sometimes, but uh, you can't beat a, a good cup of rosy. Um, what color? Uh, what color is it? it? Needs to be orange, and you need to be able to stand. Uh, it's not. It's not bright enough. Uh, the, I, I think it might be my um, my webcam light, and this is Darjeeling. Don't forget, it's not quite yeah. as um, dark. It needs to be it's... orange, and you need to be able to stand your spoon in it. Stand your spoon in it. <laughs> well, I've never had it that good, a good quality builder's tea. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, cheers. Anyway, mm. um, so um, I, I thought I thought maybe we could start if you want to just um, let let people know um, a little bit about about your teaching and, and about about your school um and where people can find out um all the necessary info um if they want to come and study with you yeah yeah sure um open to english is what i'm called um um just a very small school um not like i was previously um i i teach mainly um sort of b2 plus levels um i don't know i do not i do mainly i'm gonna I, a lot of businesses and so on but um i mean if you look back at the last year ielts cae cpe um i seem to have acquired a number of university professors who want to learn english which is a bit worrying really <laughs> um and um so that's just, that's the sort of thing i'm doing i'm teaching a lot of academic writing um and academic english as well that seems to have been the niche i've developed um but um having said that um um, I have a number of students who are um, younger, shall we say, and they just want general English because they want to prepare themselves before they go to university. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's been my niche, but um, I'm also starting, a, I don't know what I told you, I'm also starting a conversation club, conversation, um, conversation class, I should say, um, which starts in a couple of weeks. Very good. I approve. I approve. That's uh, yeah, the yeah. sort of thing that I started. So uh, yeah, the more the merrier. Well, the thing is, um, you know, when you come into an English class and it's like, sit down, here's, here's, here's the whiteboard, let's talk about modals, let's talk about, um, let's talk about um, class sentences and so other exciting things. But there comes a point where... What you need English... to say is, what you need to say is, cleft sentences, that's what we're talking about. Oh, there's a double one there. Very yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't um, think of any, I can't think of a witticism, Mike. So I'll just <laughs> three goes um, for a Cumbrian, as they say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But so, you know what I mean. Language is communication. So let's talk. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and uh, when I, because I very often I, I get um, messages from people on VK mm -hmm. asking if I can do private lessons, and mm -hmm. I wish that i could but i simply don't have the time the the, the speaking club that i run and the, and the podcast that i release and the, the you know the other content that i do on my page um is is like a, a very much a side business but mm -hmm. then obviously you know my nine to five job is working for for optimus um mm -hmm. you know and, and i i simply there's not enough hours in the day for me to take on individual students i wish there were mm -hmm. um but any time literally someone writes to me saying i'm looking for a native in particular for, for whatever reason that might be um i send them straight to you um yeah and i appreciate it i have i've, I've acquired a, a few students from um different russian cities krasnayarsk um yekaterinburg um mm -hmm. and etc i've ended up with students all over the world actually i've got um i teach students in sydney in australia kiev leicester as i mentioned <laughs> 
Well, they've um, got to learn English at some point in Leicester. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, there's, 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 there's a Russian um, community in Leicester. Um, and really? Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's not an official community, but it's, you know, a group of um, people who have settled there. And I um, ended up teaching the parents, and now their children. I'm teaching key stage two maths to some of their children, for example. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but the problem I'm having, on, interesting you say about individual students, is I've got so many individual students um, that I am actually just about, it's that the nature capacity. of the business that people come and go. But um, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of topped out with um, individual students. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I'll still send them your way, but um, oh no, and I, I still I still speak to them and I still offer them. Um, and because, um, for example, I have a student at the moment who's preparing for her IELTS. When she's mm -hmm. done her IELTS, she'll mm -hmm. um, stop studying. So there's always a natural turnover. But what I'm increasingly looking at is groups. Nice. Yeah. Um, one sort of format that I, or like business format that, that um, I was toying with at one point was um, if someone wants to study individually, um, there, there's a certain price. Obviously, you pay more for a more mm -hmm. exclusive lesson. That's obvious. Um, what you can do, though, is say, look, you can pay less and you, upon, upon that agreement, you also agree that this, in, this lesson is not exclusive. If someone else wants to study at the same time, who's at the same level, this individual just became a pair. I actually do that. I have a couple of pairs um, and I give them as individuals, I give them, a, that's going to sound a bit odd, as individuals, I give them a 25% discount um, each. Um, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, and um, so, so I am increasingly doing that. And actually, the other thing I'm doing at the moment is it's a lot of work is for um for I, i'm putting some sort of um mp3 type um um tracks together so that people mm -hmm. can so lower level um to, to so, so that people can get access to some some basic english teaching um mm -hmm. so, so you're basically yeah. trying your hand at djing that's what you're saying you well, become a DJ, I mean, <laughs> a superstar rock, DJ. Rock, rock and roll and Stephen are foreign countries. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I'm trying to do is, and it's 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 recognizing that I simply don't have um, the hours in the day to teach everybody that wants me to teach them um, mm -hmm. as individuals, and there is a ceiling to the price that people can pay. Um, sure. I mean, it's two men we're talking about. It's not. It's not. No, Moscow. well, it's not just two men. Um, I've got. Um, students in um other places and you know mm -hmm. this case of priorities you know i mean let me give you one example i had one lady recently and she um wanted me to teach her english and said oh it's a bit too expensive um 30 seconds after telling me she'd just have a second sp sit skiing holiday since christmas <laughs> so it's also priorities but that's not my i, I don't really it's not my issue <laughs> You know, yeah. Um, yeah and people I, i've talked about this with um with volvo on the podcast before um sometimes um people will make up all manner of lies just to save faith and that, that honestly if you, if you want to study with another teacher or if you didn't find the club interesting or would well, just tell me i'm an adult it's fine you don't you don't need to lie but people will lie that through their teeth and will yeah, say it's a very human thing though to to avoid embarrassment or to even avoid a, um, offense even even, even um yeah i mean <laughs> it's it's i was about, I was about to make a comment about additional nationalities but the truth of the matter is the people i deal with across uh, across the um spectrum mm -hmm. try and avoid giving me the real reason which is i don't yeah. want to study with you yeah which is fine, which is fine. That's, that's um, you know, God bless the free market, eh? That's why there's there's so many different, there's, there's me, there's you, there's, um, you know, Irina Lutsenko, there's uh, Vladimir Pavlovich, there's, you know, there's there's loads of people out there who you can go yeah. and study with and, um, and um, you know, different different teachers have different styles and different learners have different styles. And, uh, hey, that's uh, that's what it's all about. Um, speaking of speaking of learning styles, though, I wanted to get onto this. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, the 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 great the great and powerful language as as it's self titled, um, I, I gather that you have um, recently renewed your efforts in um, learning Russian. Recently, I was it's it's a classic case of 
Um, I will start on the 1st of January, and six weeks later, I'm six weeks behind schedule. Um, if you know, if you're with me. So basically, don't bugger all. Yeah. <laughs> um, let, me, let me tell you, um, which we were talking about excuses before. Um, and we talk about good teachers, bad teachers, um, and so on. When it comes down to it, um, and different methods of learning, are, you know, should we learn this way or this way, traditional or communicative? But the truth of the matter is, it's motivation and organisation. Underpins, I'm not suggesting the other things are invalid, um, but um, the, um, that, in my opinion, underpins everything else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can, because you can talk and talk and talk, but yeah, there comes a point you've got, you've got to do something. So, therefore, um, I um, thought it was about time I made, gave myself some public accountability and also just with other people that were interested, explore a different way of um, some different ideas of learning language or a language, in my case, Russian. So um, last year I did the Russian residency exam and I, I used the same technique I'm using now. Um, of going to be using, which was basically taking sentences, translating them, recording them, getting them, um, translating them correctly, and building conversations. So it's listening and speaking, um, the, the, the writing and the grammar will follow. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's the early stages, listening and speaking. And what one of the things that motivated me, as I think I told you, I have a, a Russian teacher, great, um, a great teacher, and I go once a week, and um, I mainly go because of discipline. In other words, if I didn't go, I wouldn't do anything. As in she disciplines you? Yeah, she makes me study. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, Stephen, you've been naughty. Um, what punishment can we think of this week? Yeah, but, yeah. And, but, but it's a very traditional style. So almost from the first day, it was like, Stephen, um, here are some sentences. A, B, and, and multiple choice, A, B, C, which is, the, which is the word with the right ending? And I remember saying to her, well, what do you mean? Do you, want, you know, just, it's, it's grammar, you need to choose which is, which is the right word for the grammar. And I'm going, I still don't know what you mean. And she said, well, cases, you know, cases. Um, I said, what's a case? And then she said to me, um, and, then, and then I said, I can't um, help you, get out. <laughs> but not only that, was, um, it, it really was a, a um, cart before horse. And it, it, she was surprised I um, just didn't know what she was talking about it because um, English language and cases are not, um, not companions, should we say. Um, and, um, but not only that, but it was um, the words, the vocabulary. I mean, you know, she was, I mean, I know what it, I know, Gnigi now, books. But at the time, what's this Kniga thing? Um, <laughs> what is this Kniga? <laughs> yeah, and and so she um, and so she was expecting me to get a feel for the ending based on a um, um, based on on the sentence. I just had no clue. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, um, but for my for, for the residency exam, as I say, I I, I followed this. Um, system, which I didn't invent. It was actually um, invented by somebody who is, re is involved in reviving the Welsh language. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's basically, you take this, it, there's, there's a whole, so you take the sentence, you, you write your own sentences. Um, I, this time I use Google Translate, which is terrible. I would add. <laughs> um, and then I, and, um, but it gave me a sense of the sentences and then I corrected them. Now I'm fortunate, um, I have Natasha um, mm -hmm. to, um, to correct my corrections. On standby. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and then um, record the sentences and then learn the sentences and then break the sentences down to th their component parts and make other sentences. Um, and then the idea is that I've, I, I end up with maybe a five minute conversation and then I have another five minute conversation and another and then I build up conversations. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the details now because it, um, it would take me ages to explain it, but basically I'm building vocabulary and spoken grammar for want of a better, um, for a, um, a, a better description. Very nice. Very nice. But I need to make myself accountable, accountable hence the um, Instagram. 
Just call me accountable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> William accountable. Um, yeah, it's when you said um, about putting the cart before the horse, I think that's um, that is exactly uh, exactly the, the, the right um, the metaphor to use. Yeah. Um, th this is it's a classic example that that kind of um, I'll, I'll call it what it is mistake that, that the teacher made. Um, yeah, but it's a it, traditional it, mistake. It's not. It's not the first. She's not the first person to make it. Sure, sure. Um, uh, that. Um, what should we say? Okay. Um, misguided approach, shall we say, that, yeah. that your teacher made um, was is, is a classic example of what often happens when um, when when you. So there there are two ways of processing information, right? That our mm -hmm. that our brain has. There's um, there's top up. Um, but, but, sorry, but bottom-up information processing and top-down information processing. So if you are simply dealing with the bottom layer, which is pure, unadulterated language, that's, that's, that's the bottom layer, that's Ooh. pure language. And then from that, you extrapolate, okay, what, what's going on with these words? What rules have we got here? What endings are going on here? That is called bottom-up information processing but mm -hmm. if you do the opposite which is what you do as a language learner and what your students do when you explain rules to them is you start with the top layer you start with rules you mm -hmm. start with structures and then from that you build and build and build and eventually you get to the bottom which is um pure language now mm -hmm. what, what your teacher did was to um get the wrong end of the stick so to speak she, mm -hmm. she gave you pure unadulterated language and said okay um fix this problem for me with, and i'm not going to tell you what the problem is or how to fix it um and you you very often see that with um either with um teachers who who are maybe taking too much of a traditional approach as, as you say uh, kids as well kids when if if you so <laughs> by the way if you can impress a child with your Russian, that's when you know um, <laughs> you've hit the jackpot and, and you are a true master because kids will absolutely destroy you. They are the harshest critics of um, of you learning a language that you could possibly imagine. Yeah, um, I, like if I you very it. slightly mispronounce a word, they'll say, oh my God, your Russian's so terrible. You could have said everything else perfect. And it's like, I learned your language. Now you want me to not have an accent? Jesus Christ, I'm trying. Um, but very, so for example, I, I remember this one, uh, this um, mistake that I made once um, where, um, so, uh, okay, let's let's see if you can get this. Um, what what does "ya uh, tibini vieru"? What does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> so it means I don't believe you. So vieru is believe. So "ya tibieni vieru." I made the mistake of saying "ya tibia ni vieru," mm -hmm. and this uh, child started to correct me by saying "ya ya ya tibie tibie tibie." So what she thought I had done was mispronounce the word "tibie." Mm -hmm. But okay, in reality, yeah. what I'd done is I had thought mistakenly that after virich you need the accusative case, but that's mm -hmm. not correct. After virich you need the dative case. But a native Russian speaker would not be thinking about that, um, un unless, of course, they they're a trained teacher. Which is so. This is that. This is the whole. Um, this is the, this is the thing that. Um, I think in order to correct someone's language effectively, or indeed to instruct the language effectively, you need to have a really sophisticated grasp of that dynamic of information processing and, um, and, and to be able to identify why is this person making this mistake? Is this a pronunciation mistake or a grammar mistake? Because sometimes you can't tell the difference. It could be either. Yeah, you know I mean, I've made, um, well, I say I, yeah, I have, but we make all sorts of mistakes. Um, and I think, I, so, so for example, if you, if you go back to my, my language learning careers, which is um, checkered, should we say, um, I, um, I remember schoolboy French. All I can remember of my schoolboy French, apart from my um, rather attractive French teacher singing songs, is lists of RE verbs. Go away and learn these re, re verbs. That only thing is, all I can remember is the endings. <laughs> Can't actually remember what the words are, all the meanings. Um, and um, if I contrast this, I mean, I use this example. I had four days of Hungarian. Of what? Hungarian? Yeah, yeah, I used to teach in Hungary. Um, oh. And um, part, of, part of the induction was 
we will we'll give you a, um, a Hungarian course. And the teacher spoke no English. I mean, she did speak English, but she didn't speak any English at all. And I, I, I learned more Hungarian in those four days um, um, than I um, did in five years of schoolboy French. Um, and going back even further, how I came across the, um, the, um, the learning program I want to put on Instagram is um, I spoke Welsh. I actually lived um, not too far from, from Aenea. Um, and um, I actually, um, we weren't going to talk about names, were we? Um, <laughs> and um, we, we, um, um, I, I went to a Welsh speaking school and I came out of the Welsh. Um, I didn't know you spoke Welsh. I've forgotten it all now. Um, um, it's, <sighs> it's about 35 years since I spoke any Welsh. Um, actually, uh, the here is a side. There is a school of thought. Once you learn something, you don't forget it. That's definitely not true. Who? What um, school of thought is that? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mean you can't. I don't mean you can remember it. But what I mean is, it's there somewhere. Um, oh, okay, when, I started, okay. when I had the Hungarian course, um, what what kept coming out of my Welsh was um, out of my mouth were Welsh words. Hmm. And I kept thinking, where are these coming from? <laughs> Um, and anyway, um, so I spoke Welsh and I, I, I acquired it in the playground, basically. Um, it was a Welsh speaking school, the lessons were in Welsh and it was sink or swim. Um, so I've been looking at, um, relearning the Welsh and that is how come I, how I came across, um, this, um, language learning program for the Welsh revival program and um, it, it, it's an organization called Say Something In, Say Something In Welsh. And rather than following the traditional grammar approaches, now we will teach you um, about um, you know, cases, etc. cetera. Um, they start with the, the, the sentences, they break them down and you repeat them, repeat them and you break them down and, and then you learn and you build up conversations. And it's only when you're comfortable with the sounds and the hearing, then you start moving into the grammar. Yeah, that's um, I suppose it could work. Um, it that's not how I learned Russian. Um, so maybe I'm well aware that you're very grammar focused. I remember our first conversation. <laughs> Which one? What? What was my grammar focus? I don't remember this. I, well, I, the conversation I remember from you was um, yeah, we'll focus on grammar first. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, yeah, I, and that that would be my recommendation. Um, all all jokes aside, um. You, you can try and, and learn Russian just by looking at chunks of words and, and sentences, but good luck. Um, Russian is, is a very inflected language. Mm -hmm. um, so just for anyone listening who's not super clued up on, on grammatical terms, an inflection um, is where um, grammar, um, parts of speech and gra grammar roles uh, change depending on the endings of words as opposed to so for example i i would say um i bought uh i bought this teapot uh, as a present for stephen mm -hmm. um whereas in english i say for stephen meaning that i'm giving it to stephen mm -hmm. but um in russian obviously it would be the word itself would change uh mm -hmm. the ending of the word. So that that's an inflection um i to anyone starting learning russian i would say um treat those endings and those gr fiddly grammatical bits treat them with respect and know that it will end you will make progress it, it's well, not going to seem like it. it's going to be difficult and you're it, it's going to be like you're in um a dark room with an old um lamp and you can't find your way out this is going to be grammar after grammar after grammar topic um, no i don't i end. don't actually disagree with you um despite what it, it, it sounds like i'm saying um but my point is this i need to order a cup of coffee i mean i can actually buy coffee i can i can make my way around the town quite happily mm -hmm. but in a simplistic terms let, let's go back to the beginning i need to be able to order coffee okay um and that is functional language and that is where we need to start um so let me give you a simple example i'm this sort of supports your case um and supports my case was the Americano beers malacom? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Um, which supports yours because the case ending is wrong. So I get my coffee and go, hang on a second, there's milk in this. <laughs> you know, my mate says, yeah, it's in malacom. 
I said, Biz. He said, no, you said Malacom. Malacom, you know, Sir Malacom. Um, so it supports your case, because, um, your, your argument, because you need the endings to get to, for the communicative purpose. But my argument in this, in this low level stuff, we're not talking about um, Russian C1 exams here. Yeah, sure. Is, sure. I need the language chunks. I needed, uh, you know, I need to memorize Muslim Americano, um, Biz Malaco. Well, Malaka, what are you going to say? Malaka, Malaka, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, um, so it, it sort of supports your argument in one sense, but I'm, um, my point is that's not day one. Yeah, sure. That's um, that that's a fair point. And obviously, we should. We, I think we should separate two things here. We should separate functional language, as you say. Yeah, there there are certain situations that you're going to because obviously you you are you know starting your um, language learning journey already living in Russia, which is which is quite rare. I would say, uh, I certainly yeah. didn't do that. Um, but uh, so yeah, obviously you need to learn like you know bits and bobs and, and chunks of language which are going to be useful in your day to day life. Um, does that necessarily help you in your in your overall um, goals of learning Russian? I wouldn't say that it does necessarily. No, and here is what I I, I sort of would agree with you. So I mean, yes, I am perhaps not normal, if I can use that phrase, insofar as um, <laughs> um, normal now, I'll, I will, I've gone Russian, um, um, in, insofar as I live in Russian, in Russia even. Um, and I, you know, when, when, the, when Natasha and Igor and Nira, et cetera, are having a conversation, I can follow them, okay? It's passive, it's passive language. Um, and you have to, um, to make your language active, you have to work at it. Mm -hmm. um, so the, 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 there are two stages for me, functional language, which will get you to a, a, a functional level, yeah? Um, but if you want to, I have to do the Russian citizens, uh, citizenship exam in a couple of years. Um, for me to do that, I have to um, be much more grammar aware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, my, my tips for anyone learning Russian would be, um, for, as I say, first of all, um, those endings and all of the cases and and, and um, you know inflections, um, it, yeah, it, it takes a long time to learn. I, of that, I, I don't doubt. The other thing is, um, the approach I am taking is not the approach with a capital sure. T. Sure. Um, there are um, if 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 um, if you if you go to the polyglot conference, for example, there are as many um, th there are as many different approaches as there are. Um, as there are people. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I, I know one of the guys who founded the pod. I used to live with one of those guys. Um, yeah. you, you remember um, in English File Intermediate Third Edition, there's, um, a lang there's a lesson about can and be able to. And mm -hmm. the reading exercise is about this guy called Alex Rawlings, mm -hmm. who's like a polygon. He speaks like 11 languages and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Um, I used to live with him. Okay. Uh, in in Yaroslavl when when I did my year abroad at university. Yeah. Um so, and I, he's um if not one of the founders, certainly he's he's very involved in the polyglot. Can't, well he was at least. I don't know if he still is. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, I think I'm in language the, the, I can't I forget which one of them is. is there's one of the fifteen or twenty-two languages or something like that. Mm. Um and it's um but the point is there is a, yes, there are there are standard principles to apply. But there seems that there seems to be as many different approaches as there are language learners, um, and except that they all have one thing in common: they all are systematic about it. They all do it regularly. They all they all have um, a, 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 a a approach, if you like. Mm -hmm. But let's uh, not be too postmodernist about this. That's not to say that all approaches are as good as other approaches. I know that's not what you're no. saying, but there are no, some not. approaches that definitely don't work, we, and we know they don't work. For example, yes, and, 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 and the least effective approach is not planning to do anything. That's very true. The least effect, yeah, that's true. The least effective approach is not doing anything, <laughs> but equally as effective would probably be, is the approach that was quite fashionable in the 1970s, I think, where um, instead of teaching children um phonics and spelling and reading mm -hmm. and stuff they would just um put them together in a classroom and let them play and just let language spontaneously happen and yeah. it's not clear from the data that that approach really has any effect at all um, now it's, it's, it's interesting because um i mean lang the language acquisition um, movement if you like um 
was a reaction against too much grammar led grammar translation um mm -hmm. let, let's start let's start your first day of learning russian by asking about case endings it's like uh, you know it, it's it's and you know and things come in fashion i notice grammar translation is um is is becoming a fashion again um mm. so i think it's it's true that things come in fashion but my point which is comes back to my the, your original question is that <sighs> Um, I can't remember who said it first. It's a it's a cliche saying, you know, fail to plan, plan to fail. Um, oh yeah, it was Benjamin Franklin or someone like that. I don't it, know. It, reputedly, <laughs> yes. Um, and um, you know, so, and, and so do something, do it systematically, make yourself accountable. Yeah, the the man who does uh, the man who does something um, will do better than the man that does nothing, or indeed the woman. Yeah, let's be let's be inclusive about this. Um, yeah. In addition, I would also say when um, I don't know what your system is for learning new vocab, um, I would recommend uh, and if I could go back in time and speak to myself when I started learning Russian, I would definitely tell myself this. Um, when you learn a new word, learn all of the um, derived forms by which I mean, if you learn a verb, what's the noun that's associated with that verb? What's the adjective, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And when you learn new vocabulary, always mark the stress. Mm -hmm. yes that, that i will agree with this yeah. so put a little accent showing where the stress is on the word it'll save you so much heartache trust me heartache's the wrong word uh what a ball leg, i suppose is what i'm trying um, to say embarrassment let me tell you um my first um my first visit to the soviet cafe in this um blah 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 bajalusta 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh dearie me yeah stress yeah stress is stress is a, is a funny beast um yeah for anyone who wants to visit the uh what is it cafe SSSR, i think on uh, Omsk, yes. in uh in Nizhny Wartovsk, then uh, go and give it a visit next to a uh, city center um Maybe shout, shout out to, to being an american <laughs> american excuse me oh god i thought you were a spy he's from the yeah, well, that, that was that was the greeting they were i mean I mean, they were really friendly in there, but there was no sort of Bajalusta Americanski. <laughs> yeah, there's um certain times when if I'm like walking down the street um with a colleague in in, in Niz speaking English, sometimes you walk you walk past a couple of guys who are sort of squatting by a park bench eating sunflower seeds, and both of you would just intuitively pause, walk past them. And then resume the conversation because you know yes. that you don't want those guys hearing you speaking English. Just, just there's so a, a look about them that it's like maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, I um, I was skiing in um in, in the Zvartovsk in the forest, and I brought the skis back, and um I didn't do it quite in the way that um the um the, this the, the um ski hire attendant appreciated, and I I just heard um, as I as I um failed his um. His, his politeness test, if you like, his, his competency test. I just heard in the background, Medikansky sanctions. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I'm from Cumbria. What's that going to do with anything? Damn Cumbrian sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> sanctions are a really interesting, um, interesting thing because when, when this sort of first wave of sanctions hit Russia, mm. I'm no fan of sanctions, by the way. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily... Um, a good way of, of carrying out diplomacy. And I think people, well, I say people, I mean um, America and the West, can be sometimes a little bit too quick to apply sanctions. There's, there's a time because, and a place. Sure. That's because it makes, it's the, um, it's the political equivalent of squaring, the, the, the di diplomatic political equipment, um, equivalent of squaring up. I've done something. I haven't actually done anything, but I've done something, so therefore, you know, vote squaring up. Nice for anyone listening. Squaring up is um is like what would you say is like when you're getting ready to fight. Where yeah, it's two, like two imagine males. You're, yeah, you're getting two ready males. to fight, but you don't actually fight. There's another yeah. nice phrase actually. Um, but it's, it's a very primate thing to do. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you yeah. see chimpanzees doing it, don't you? Yeah. Um, oh, there was there, there was two there was saber two, yeah, taxi drivers doing it the other day. <laughs> do you know that one? Say saber rattling. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Britannia uh, Rujan is saber rattling your saber. Yeah. Um, what were we even talking about? But, ah, yeah, sanctions. So here's the thing with sanctions is that when, so in um, 2014, when all of the, you know, sort of Crimea and, and the Maidan mm -hmm. stuff kicked off, mm -hmm. um, 
I remember that there were a bunch of um, economic sanctions which were levied against Russia mm -hmm. uh, on certain parts of the oil and gas industry and on uh, Putin's uh, inner social circle or political circle. Mm -hmm. um, in response to that, Putin then announced um, Russia is now um, launching counter sanctions, these so called like, like, sanctions. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're now uh, banning any import of European and American food products, mm -hmm. which um, to, to the, yeah, cheese, for example, uh, to the best of my knowledge, that is still the case in Russia. Certainly, certainly with regard to cheese, because I've had this conversation recently. <laughs> well, there we go. Now, they, at that point, I think that the, the these original economic sanctions and these food sanctions just became combined in people's minds under this one umbrella term sanctions that you speak to a lot of people if you ask the average person on the street why can't i go and buy for example why can't i go and buy um italian parmesan in a shop well because of western sanctions people think that europe has banned export of products uh, to to russia where it's the exact opposite i don't know if that was deliberate political play but it's yeah it's very really weird Pe people um um actually think it, that... it just there is so much um misinformation um and um mm. it, it's 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 almost um it, it's too global a, a conversation to have but quite frankly um almost on any subject you 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 choose to read about what you read here and what you read here um and it's like is that the same event yeah what do you what do you put that down to? where do you get your news from um, if you're reading about Russia, for example, um, I, I read various sources. I read the, the, the Russian press. Um, I read the English language Russian press, obviously, um, but I also read um, British newspapers. I try, I try and avoid the political, the politically um, attached newspapers. I I disagree with that. I just and let, and let me explain why. Because if you you, you take um, I think bias is nothing to be afraid of in media. In fact, I actively seek out biased news sources. If you, if you, if you, I, I, yes, I agree. But what I was trying to say was, um, if you read that news source and that news source and that news source, you get a balanced view. If you just read um, the Telegraph in the UK or Russia Today, not that I'm equating the two, um, in, in, <laughs> in, 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 in Russia, um, you get a very, you, um, you, you, get, you get a very, blinkered view of, of a subject true true um, that's exactly what i'm saying so i i like it if i for example if i read the guardian mm -hmm. not something i very often do but if i do read the guardian i say okay these guys are liberal they're on the left they are affiliated with the labor party in in the uk um i can read their opinion pieces and their op-eds and their articles and know okay this is the lens through which these guys are looking and then if i read the, the telegraph or, or the times well the times is more center but um the telegraphs are good my brother writes for the telegraph actually so <laughs> not have it besmirched on this podcast thank you no he works for the finance section so not really political okay um and and so i read the telegraph and i say okay these guys are support the conservative party they're pro brexit they um you know they, they they're sort of um skeptical of, of the eu um you know blah 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 they're, they're on the right of the political spectrum okay that's their opinion what are these guys saying but then if i go to something like bbc news for example which is supposedly has no political opinion has no political affiliation we're completely unbiased ah oh, i don't i don't believe you sorry i don't everyone has a bias you're saying that it, like all of the journalists who work at BBC, they don't have their own opinions. I, very, I don't very, believe you. But the BBC's bias is establishment. That's really it's um it, it, it's it's um was established as a uh, establishment humanist organisation. And that actually, actually, actually look back at its history, that that's its philosophy. Um, yeah, everybody has bias. I have an opinion. Yeah. You don't agree with you don't agree with me. The facts the, the facts are the facts. But you you think one thing, I think of another. It's just it, we we. we we form opinions through our own filters. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, I mean, in, in, in a simplistic um, extreme, we, um, coming back to sanction, um, sanctions and maybe Maidan, um, we've, often the opinions we form, we read to support our opinion, which reinforces our opinion, and then we reinforce. But 
there, there, are, there are things. Let me give an example. Um, in 2017, I was in Kiev. And I was walking past the parliament building and there was an assassination. Um, I'm not going to go into the, the details of it and the politics of it because it's... Um, but um, it was a, one person was shot. Yeah, and it was a it was a political assassination. Um, it was it, it was it was a revenge assassination, for one of a better word. And I got a panic phone call from Stephen. Are you okay? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't see the assassination, by the way. I just happened to be in the district at the time, um, mm -hmm. and putting two and two together, I realised I was close by. And um, yeah, I'm fine. Um, why? Well, th th there's chaos in the streets of Kiev. People are being shot. You know, people are dying. Oh, okay. Where? Um, near the Parliament building. When? On Tuesday afternoon. About what time? 3 p.m. Um, hmm, interesting, because I happened to walk past the Parliament building, blah, blah. And so it was reported. I'm not going to go into where and who by, but it was reported for, for specific bias that this was a, a chaotic situation, unstable, dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Mm hmm yeah, well, I believe you can uh, tune in to next week's instalment of uh, Ukraina Gerith on uh, Pierre Canal or whichever propaganda station it's on. Yeah, um, the, the sort of narrative of Ukraine is in constant crisis, Ukraine is burning down. Um, yeah. But then the, the flip side of that is that, well, let's look at the Western media and their depiction of Ukraine. Like... Um, it's like poor little defenseless Ukraine and they're just being overrun and, and you know, the, um, they're, they're being, um, you know, crushed by, by an oppressive aggressor. Well, I mean, let's not forget that, you know, U Ukraine, um, you know, th this was a coup d'etat that happened. This, this was an internal revolution. I mean, you have to mention that. That's relevant. Uh, and, and this is a country that's, that's on its border, that there are border security issues. You, you can't just not mention that. And most Western media outlets wouldn't mention it. Um, and, and let's not forget as well that Ukraine, in poor little defenseless Ukraine, I mean, Ukraine has, has enormous problems with corruption and internal, um, you know, strong arming and like... Oh, yeah. I mean, more so than Russia. Russia, Russia yeah, not Russia, sorry. I apologise, everybody. Um, Ukraine is not a stranger to corruption. Um, you know, it had, it had massive systemic I think problems. even the Russians would forgive you for saying that Russia is no stranger to corruption either, because it <laughs> certainly isn't. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are, there are huge problems. And if you, you, you walk around um, Kiev, for example, and, you know, you look at um, the, the, the roads and where, uh, and, and, and so you can be walking down a road, brand new road, perfect, immaculate. Um, I'm talking about a high street here as opposed to a private road. Um, and then it just stops and it becomes a cart track. Um, and that's because the particular oligarch, for want of a better word, um, this is his patch and he wanted it looked after. But this next section is, you know, I have no, I have no interest there. So it doesn't, um, the road doesn't get repaired. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. no, I mean, that, that's just a, a simple everyday example. But, the, you know, it's, it's, um, it's indicative of, of a deeper problem. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, but then again, we talk about this, um, um, but then you go to Moldova and you think, actually, Ukraine is wonderful. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's um, and not not to get too political as well, but um, like I, I always find that um, when I go, if when I was living in Chumen, I would mm -hmm. go to um, Yekaterinburg for like a you know a day or two or whatever. And I'd say, oh my God, this is really nice. Why don't I move here? Yeah, Two yeah. men seems, seems like not very nice compared to Yekaterin Borg. Or, well, it depends where you are, of course. Um, but then, you know, I go to Nizhny Valtosk for a couple of days to do some exams. And, you know, it's, it's grim up north. I suppose that's a gen general yeah. term for all countries. And then I come back down to, to Chumen. And it's like, oh my God, Chumen is so nice. And what was I complaining about? Like compared to Nizhny Valtosk, so Chumen is heaven. I took a trip to Altai and... Um, um, a couple of the cities I remember, Barnaul on the way, and Bisk. Barnaul, yeah, yeah. Um, forgive my pronunciation, and Bisk and Gorna Altaisk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and um, yeah, come back, Nizhny Valtosk, all is forgiven. 
Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, th those two are the, they are each um, capitals in their own right. So Barnaul is the capital of uh, Altaisky Krai, and Gorna Altaisk is the capital of Respublika Altai. So they, they, yeah. the, the whole area is called Altai because of the mountain range, but one of them is a republic and one of them is just. Yeah, Gorna. Um, but it's, it's not so much that. It's the. Um, it, it's the um, how run down they are um, mm. um, for reasons of corruption. Um, really? Yeah, so for example, um, and we, we, um, I, I forget which one it was in now, I think it might have been Bisk. What, what's happened to the road? Oh, um, the, the, the city governors um, um, spent the money. Mm. I didn't mean spent the money. Yeah, he built himself a new house. Um, well, the thing is, though, it's not always that simple because so I was listening to um, a podcast recently with. Um, oh, so I can't remember his name. It's one of the guys from a Comedy Club. Um, it's, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and basically they were interviewing um, Varlamov. Uh, do, do you know who that is, by the way? Ilya Varlamov. Sorry, I didn't. Ilya Varlamov. Do you know no. him? So but he's he's a super famous blogger in Russia. He's like um That's why I don't know him. <laughs> okay. So he's he's really Long, into like his whole thing is all like, you know, city planning and urban planning and, and mm -hmm. you know, um talking about architecture and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And he goes around not just cities in Russia, but like all over the country uh, all over the world, sorry, talking about like infrastructure and planning. It's really, really interesting stuff. Oh, you'd have to send me his link. I am quite interested in that sort of stuff and, and, and transport and for sure, for sure. Um uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you his YouTube page afterwards. But yeah. on basically on this podcast they were talking about exactly this issue and the thing is is um the the federation um has really got the regions by the bulls um mm -hmm. because the russian federation is not really a federation in the same way that for example the united states is in the mm -hmm. u.s states rights are extremely important and states really have a lot of um independence in terms of their mm -hmm. legislature and their their finance and, and their budget um that's not quite the case in, in Russia because the, the way that Varlamov was explaining it was that um, the, let's say, like some sort of okrug or some region or mm -hmm. whatever collects its own budget through, through local taxes. Then they send all of that to the center, to, mm -hmm. to, to Moscow, and Moscow sends them back whatever they think they deserve. So if someone steps out of line, if someone, um, you know, uh, isn't spending their money in the correct way, then the Federation can, can you know, put a stop to that. And Not only being, that. being a mayor of a, of a medium-sized town in Russia is one of the most dangerous jobs you can do. Like, I about, think 25% of them go to prison. Yeah, the, the, prison. there's the guy um, in, in, um, in, in the Far East at the moment who is being um, pursued exactly um, for, for mm. that at um, the moment. For it's God, interesting, God. actually, because... Um, if I remember rightly, um, the only two oblasts that have a positive um, balance um, here are Chumin and Moscow. Um, and all of the others, following your, your, I can be corrected on this, all of the others, the money that they receive more back from Moscow than they send to them. So they, they run in deficit, if you like. Mm. Um, so um, just because of just because of local taxes and, and, and so on. So yes, you know, they're, they're in a, a vulnerable position. Mm. Do, you, do you mean because it's the oil region, obviously it is, is a wealthy region, generates a lot of tax income. Yeah, it's one, it's one of the, I think it's the wealthiest region outside of Moscow. If I'm not <coughs> That's mistaken. my point. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, well, it depends how you count it because I think if you count Tumensk Oblast with the autonomous Okruks, then it's, then it's really, really big. Um, and, and for that reason alone generates a lot of money. Um, it yeah. depends whether you, I mean, I can never quite work out whether we talk about Chumin Oblast as in Chumin Oblast or whether we include Hantimansi, um, whether we include Yamal, you know, it's just like, okay, <laughs> where does he start and where does it finish? Yeah, the, uh, the older federal subjects, they, they do get pretty confusing, I'll give you that. Yeah, but um, yeah, but I mean, I, I always feel a bit, I, I would be um, honest, with you when i first um i came from the uk came from western europe came to russia i had preconceived ideas yeah we all do um but actually when i am um, i sit here now um and look back in the uk and think actually Stephen, the world is different um you, you you see the world from where you are sitting and you if you when you are sitting in a different place the world looks different so um we're talking about corruption we talked i talked about ukraine we talked about moldova what, Russia. Um, 
I, I, I remember um, a guy I used to know in, in the East Midlands. And he was responsible for distributing um, government contracts for repairing social housing. Um, and he is now extremely wealthy. Um, and basically what he did was, you want the contract, I want a cut of your contract. And um, one of his schemes was, I will be um, a joint owner, quote unquote, of your business. I want 50% of your business. So um, every contract that, he was, that was given out, um, he basically got a cut off, you know, for, for, for social housing repair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, classic. Classic. Uh, uh, to, to end our, uh, our podcast, I'll, I'll, let me teach you a new word in Russian. Well, maybe you know it already. I don't know. Ready? Go on. Atkati. So, what? Got the atkati. I, I, I cannot do that. <laughs> you do? It was pretty close there. That was pretty close. I could do it in riba, but that is the only time I can make it when I want fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you have to talk about fish then. Uh, but yeah, atkati, that means like uh, kickbacks, what you were just yeah. describing. So, this, uh, this yeah, type of yeah. But, but this, was, this, was, this wasn't just kickbacks. This was like, this was a, 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 a system. Mm. Um, as opposed to, um, um, I should put it, as, as opposed to ad hoc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and my point is, without going to analysis, yeah, it's easy to it's easy to point the finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I think, yeah, you, you you need to, you know, we we all agree that corruption's not not a good thing, and you should call it out, whether it's in Russia or Moldova or Ukraine or indeed the East Midlands. Um, yeah. Corruption's bad in whichever country you're in. I agree. I agree. Yeah, we could end up talking about Darjeeling tea, you know. How do we get onto this? Oh, that's that's what it's all about. We uh, we have a, a a roller coaster of different topics. Um, but don't worry, I still have some Darjeeling tea left in my pot, so I will uh, polish that off as I as I edit our video. So, um, okay. thanks very much for coming on the show, then, Stephen. And uh, yeah, let's um, we'll we'll do it again sometime, definitely. And uh, we'll do it. We'll see. We'll see how my um, language language learning accountability. Um, is, yes. is, is, is going. Um, so let, let's let's have a progress check in a couple of months and see how your Russian is coming along. Yeah, we can do it. I, I, I definitely need to. Um, um, I shouldn't be talking about it in public because it puts me that you have to do something. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I will, uh, we will see. We will see. We will. We will. All right then. Um, thanks once again and uh, cheerio. Take care. Bye now. Mm -hmm.